This never happens in Texas. This is a once in a lifetime event. What lessons can we learn when things like this happen? So I'm thankful for this. Why? Because it has shown me where my homestead is deficient. A lot of people are without electricity in Texas right now. And a lot of people rely on that electricity for heating and things like that. So without the electricity for days and days and days in the midst of freezing weather, that is a huge problem. Why? Well, some of our friends in Houston have already had pipes burst in their house. And from working in Houston as an architect, I know a majority of those pipes run through the attic space and above the house. That's not the same as in the north. So that space is freezing first, bursting the pipes, water's pouring down, ceilings are coming down. It's a bad situation. I fell in love with Houston 10 years ago when I moved there, had the time of my life there. It was amazing. And I feel so far sorry for that city. It's gotten hit by record 500 or a thousand year of floods from hurricanes and now this they never ever see weather like this it is out of control but we can all learn lessons from things like this so i am not going to step out from underneath the carport because this is mostly freezing rain but these are like also little ice balls that are falling it's very odd I've never seen weather like this. Well, I have seen weather like this in Michigan, but it was an extremely long time ago when I lived there and went through this. This is highly unusual for this area, but it teaches us the lesson that you have to be prepared for anything to happen. Now, of course, you can't prepare for absolutely everything to happen, and that's where faith and reliance on God come in. Now we haven't lost power yet, and that is a huge blessing, but when we do, it might be a little bit of an issue. Not a huge issue, because we did do some preps, like putting in our wood stove uh, ahead of time. So this house runs on an electric heat pump, and if the electricity goes out, you have zero power. And luckily we have water. Water is different here in the country. We have a rural water system. I sit on the board of directors. We do a great job with keeping our generators up to date, running, everything running smoothly. So if the power does go out, everybody still has water. We also bury our uh, supply lines three feet in the ground. Now the frost line here in this part of Texas is 12 inches, but we go down 36 to bury our lines. And we do that for a very specific reason, just for events like this. We want to have some, uh, some buffer there. So very thankful for that. So we probably won't run out of water. If we do, got plenty of snow melted on the wood stove, no problem. You have to improvise and overcome. So a friend of ours south of here, more towards Houston, she is outside catching water that's melting off of her roof because she doesn't have any power. She doesn't have any water right now. She's catching the, the melt that's coming off the roof and using that to flush toilets, boiling that for drinking and filtering, so on and so forth. Great job, Andrea. These poor little birds flying around are just getting pelted with these little ice balls right now. They are under the carport with me. There's a whole bunch of them. And every time I move, they kind of flutter and then they try to get back to where they've been. But so this has also taught me to not be reliant on one type of system. So here's, here's what I'm talking about. We have a solar system planned for our home but that will not run the heat pump heater. There's no way. So we have to rely on the wood stove for heat if something like this happens again. That will run pretty much everything else. I think at the system size we're gonna get, which is about eight kilowatts, and that'll take care of this small house. It's 1,700 square feet. But it's not gonna do things like the electric stove. It's not gonna run things like the dryer. 
Of course, you can always dry by hanging in the house, around a wood stove in the wintertime, and hang on a line outside. I know that. It's also not going to run, oh, what else do we have? Oh, the water heater. So it's not going to run the water heater very well at all. It's going to drain batteries. You can see we haven't had sun for days and days and days. Those batteries, if I had a solar system, would not have a chance to recharge. So we're not going to be running big ticket items like the water heater or the dryer, which I probably wouldn't anyway, uh, or the electric stove. So we're going to combine systems. We're going to get the solar system, but we're also going to get some big propane tanks. We're going to put in maybe a thousand gallon, maybe 1500, you know, two tanks, a 500 and a thousand. I know because you can only fill them to 80%. So the thousand gallon tank is only 800 gallons of propane. Keep that in mind if you're going to put that in. So we need to get a new stove, a new water heater, and uh, a new dryer, which no problem. We have got to plan for those things financially, but you know, we've been saving up for certain things, saving up for that solar system. Save, save, save. Pay off your debt and save. Dave Ramsey, 100%. Do it now, all of you. Get yourselves out of debt so you can do things that you need to do when you need to do them, like buy a propane tank and get it hooked up to your house because that is so needed. Redundant systems or dual systems or you know, having several different options to do things is so so important you got to do those to be able to survive now you can also go to the old methods right so we've got the wood stove we're taking care of that we can line dry clothes we can cook by a fire do, there's a lot of different things but what i'm telling you is take opportunities like this take these opportunities look to see where you're deficient take those lessons take those object lessons that god is giving you and prepare accordingly. Write them down. What happened here? Was I deficient in this area? Okay, we got to take care of that. Find a system to take care of that. Whatever it is. You guys can do it. But I want you to think about it, all right? I hope that you're staying safe, warm, and dry. And I'll pray for you all because I know some people are really hurting right now. A lot of people in Houston have died already from this because they didn't know how to keep themselves warm. The city is a different beast. It's, <laughs> friends, if you have the opportunity, I've told you this before, get out of the city because since we haven't lost power yet, we're out in the countryside, we're on a rural system, co-op system, but uh, power, they can't generate enough power right now for all the homes that need all of it. So the cities, they're shutting down huge swaths of the cities because that's where they're going to save the most energy, not from a bunch of scattered rural homes. They're going to shut down massive chunks of city and you're not going to get it back for a while. So if you have the opportunity, more make the opportunity, leave. Leave now, plan accordingly, and leave. We love you. Stay safe. See you in the next video. Bye.